Well, hi guys, um, from Valparaiso, Indiana. It's Bethany Drew here with Stampin' Up. And um, yes, I don't know how many times I say, hopefully those of you who watch the replay probably skip through all my talking, but I'm so glad you don't come here for like a makeup tutorial. That's not what I'm about. <laughs> uh, Cause here I am still in my old Spring Hill shirt and um, my comfortable exercise pants. But we're going to have some fun with the slim sayings. Um, last week I had you guys vote on a couple different choices and um, this is fun. I'm excited. Um, I just, we've been hosting Christmas stuff and we just had family leave yesterday. So I don't, um, I haven't had a whole lot of time to play. So literally just sat down a half hour ago, which is why I changed the time to three o'clock to just cut out a few things to prepare. So we're just going to play together. So if you have the slim sayings, uh, those of you who are my downline and my team, hey, Chris, so glad you're here today. Um, did you guys miss me last week? Yeah, just before Christmas. Um, I know everybody's probably had probably way too much to eat. I did try to exercise today too, because you know, back to trying to be a little bit more normal about what I eat instead of having cookies and cake and stuff like every single day, because it's Christmas time, right? Like. It's it's time to have yummy food, right? So I didn't hold back over Christmas time, but now I need to kind of get get it back together with what I'm eating and be a little bit more balanced, I guess. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Lorelai. So glad you guys have come and to join me. Um, so this makes me excited. I think you're excited about these new slim, um, slim sayings, the stamp set, and the dies that um, make the cool slimline cards. The exciting thing that I don't have to show you is that we do have, because I forgot, I ordered a couple times pre-ordered, but we actually have Stampin' Us just come out with some slimline card um, envelopes as well. So if you make these cards, they will have envelopes um, that, are, that are something you can purchase, which is exciting to me because they have a cute little scallop on them. So I will show those to you at some point, but I did not, somehow I missed that in my pre-order. So that makes me kind of bummed, but... I will be ordering again soon. Shocker, right? So without any further ado, so you don't have to look at my very plain face today. <laughs> um, let's just start playing and see what we, what fun we can have with the slim slim sayings, stamp set, and dice. So let me turn around. And I've I feel like I've got stuff all over my phone. Okay, so. I can't show you quite yet because next week is when the catalog will go live. So I can't show you inside the catalog yet, which is kind of a bummer. But again, on uh, the mini catalog, the January through June catalog, this catalog will go live January 4th. So just before my next week's video on January 5th, and then I'll be able to like, ooh, browse through the rest of the catalog with you. But let me show you the stamp set. So this is Slim Sayings. Um, again, I'm really excited that we're doing, uh, so this is, the Sayings are really cool. You wouldn't necessarily need to buy this stamp set, so you don't need to get the bundle, but of course they always make it more fun. And some of these are really cool for the long, slim slim line, um, just the card style will fit really well. The You Are One of a Kind, you can cut these up, you can make it, uh, just make it one saying too, but these will all go really well with the slimline size of a card. Now this is our true like red rubber. Um, so I wanted to show you again because I haven't done this for a while, just for those of you who are kind of newer maybe to Stampin' Up! When you get, um, <clears throat> well, let me pull out the other kind of stamp set, which is our photopolymer set. Okay, so this Rainbow of Happiness stamp set that I showed you a while ago that has cool dyes is a photopolymer set. Um, so these do not have any stickers. You don't have anything that you need to put on these. So these are much easier to manage and to clean. Um, and you can see right through them. I love them. Um, I love that they have them. They're pliable and so you can kind of bend them where you want. So that's the photopolymer, our totally clear stamps. Um, but these, I still think that these ink up better than our photopolymer sets. Um, so there's no perfect stamp either. 
Um, so I really love the red rubber. They work best with our markers and stuff too, where on the photopolymer, sometimes they, I don't know, kind of come off of the photopolymer. Um, so when you do get the red rubber stamps, I always keep the outline of the stamps because then I know, oh, when I'm stamping, oh, if when I start putting them back, peeling them off, cleaning them, and then I get them back in the case, I know right where they fit. And then when I get them all back and I'm, oh, I'm missing one stamp, which one am I missing? Um, so I like to keep this as just kind of a holder in place of the stamps. Um, but you don't have to put these stickers on, but the stickers, um, the new stickers that Stampin' Up! has come with are really sticky. So it takes, sometimes you even really have to be careful to peel those off very carefully. Sometimes I have to get a nail, or if you don't have nails, you might want to take your paper uh, piercer to poke under there and get that off because you don't want to rip your stamps. Um, but if you like having the stickers on there, that's where you do get a sheet of stickers. Turn it over so like the waxy side is face up and usually right how when you turn it over the right way you can get them to face exactly how all of these are turned so this you are one of a kind stamp is the last one I have and usually most of the stickers peel off one at a time some people start the sticker and, and put it on halfway and then peel off the other half I take the whole backing off so everybody does this a little bit differently um, <clears throat> you don't want to do this in your lap. You want to make sure you're on a flat surface when you put your sticker on. And then this always reminds me of, I love Legos and I loved like putting Legos together when I was a kid, but you know, getting the stickers on. Um, and you just want to make sure you get lined up. I don't just plop it right down. I want to make sure it's lined up in its groove there in the space. And then I kind of just go follow it along, make sure it's in the right spot because once you press it down, that sticker's not coming off. And then just peel it off, and you've got your sticker on there. And then I do throw the rest of this away. But once you get your sticker on, then it is super sticky. You get it on there. Sometimes I like to make sure, with the red rubber, because it's not photopolymer, I'm more concerned about making sure the words on my red rubber are straight compared to the block here. Sometimes the sticker looks straight and it works just fine. Sometimes you have to be careful and make sure that's lined up and it may take a little testing. So that's the downside to the red rubbers. You don't know exactly where you're stamping it, but generally it's about, it's about right. So we've got a happy for you, a happy birthday. You are one of a kind. Congrats to the graduate. You've got enjoy, and then you really are fabulous, okay? And that's a stamp set you can use for the sayings, but you can use any stamps with these. So let me show you the dies. And these are really cool. Okay, so you get one die, um, or you get four dies all together, but one that cuts kind of the chevron pattern, and then you get this border, stitched border, that goes the whole length of a slimline card. And then you get this also like scalloped quarter, and then this cool die that would cover the, the front of a slimline card. Hey Liz, say hi if you're coming on, yay. Oh, Lorelai and you are together, that's fun. Chris, you ordered more? Of course you did, I'm gonna order more as well. Cause we're addicts, right? We're all, Those of you here, even if you don't order a ton, you're still addicted to come watching play, right? <laughs> um, okay, so one other um, let's see. I wanted to give you one other tip. Okay, so when you when you get your paper paper your eight and a half by eleven paper, yes, 
um, Liz, I just missed it. I, I see where they are now in their, um, in the catalog. I just missed them when I did my two pre-orders, but I, so I will be pre-ordering them soon. The envelopes are so pretty. I love them, but I can't show you yet or customers yet. I know you, those of you on my team and those of you who are demonstrators have already seen it. I'll show them next week to everybody. Um, so you get an eight and a half by 11. This is the, our regular size cardstock. When you are making slimline, you want to keep the eight and a half side, and on the 11 side, you're gonna cut it at seven inches. Okay, so with my paper trimmer, because typically the slimline size is eight and a half by three and a half when, after you fold it. So what's a double of three and a half? You have to do a little math. So if I open this up, I'm gonna cut it <clears throat> Cut this at seven inches. Okay, so then you get that much cut off, which you could actually use when you trim that much off. It's still got room enough for you to trim if you wanna trim this uh, background piece. That's kinda nice. And then I'm gonna pull my cutter down and then I just want to score on the, the side that I just cut seven inches I'm gonna go in to three and a half inches and I'm gonna score at three and a half so that's half of the seven inches there and then when you fold that in half this is your your slimline size so three and a half by eight and a half and then I'll show you how perfectly these match. Okay. Now I'm showing you the size of the die here on my cutting pad when you use your, um, your big shot or your big boss. Um, I like to tilt my, these uh, dies just a little bit, but it's a little bit tricky. You really have to, you can't tilt it a whole lot because it fits just perfectly in here. Um, so these are a little bit tricky when you run it through. It's, it's a little bit hard to get it started. Um, but you can do it. Um, and then once you run it through, all of these, like this one, all of these pieces are going to come out and you le you're left with a thin outline, but I'll show you what I like that they did because I, one thing you could use on, on this is you could put these on adhesive sheets. So that is one possibility. Oh, see, I tilted it and it didn't cut all the way. So I could line my die back up and cut that out with my Big Shot, but I'm just gonna take a scissors because it's just a tiny bit that didn't get cut. I'm gonna take my scissors and just trim it. Because it just didn't cut that corner. Again, because when you tilt it, it's like, it barely fits in that length, but it does. So just saying, if you, if you keep it perfectly straight when you cut it through, it's gonna take a little bit of more effort because then that roller has to roll over that straight edge all at once. And that's why I typically like um, tilting mine a little, if that makes any sense, hopefully. Okay, so all of these edges are scraps and I'll throw all those away those little pieces that come out. However, you don't wanna throw away, not yet, you don't wanna throw away all the pieces that it cuts out because you could put those back in to your cutout piece and I'll show you what I mean by that. So how cute is that when you, now with this, if you didn't use, and I did not put this on adhesive adhesive sheets, I do like that they've left these little um, blurbs that you could add either glue dots or something on, or you could use Tombow and just add Tombow to those uh, spots. Uh, so whatever works better for you. Um, I'm trying to think of what. So here's the white outline of the chevron that you could add. 
And I've made a few bases here. So I'm showing you what the cutout looks like. And I've made, I've got a Coastal Cabana. This is um, our, what is that? The pale, petal pink. So this is the petal pink color, our kind of peachy color card base. Um, I've made some white card bases, all the three and a half by eight and a half size. Now I was gonna show you too, um, this, our rainbow glitter paper that's in the annual catalog. This is kind of a fun, um, fun paper to use on these uh, cards as well. So um, that's where I will show you a couple different things that you can do um, with keeping the outline. And then since I cut out a white one, I could either do white on white and put them back in there, but or I can use, um, I could not even use that and just use the pieces that I cut out of this for part of the card, all of the card, and where you can get creative. where I'm curious if I can just put this together without using the outline and just space it out that way. So this is, again, this is the rainbow glitter paper. It's so pretty, I love it. To get some of that blue. I, I think that one is actually the next one. See, now when you don't use the background of it, you know, you can space this however you want. There are more in here. And I could put add this triangle in there if I wanted to. It's just, it is helpful to have the background when you want to slide it back in. And is that fun having that rainbow of color in there and sparkly rainbow color? And then you could just add a saying on it really. There is a little run, a little triangle there too, if I wanted to add that in there. And this I'd probably use just Tombow glue in because then you can kind of slide it so in case it gets a little crooked right away. And I would just do one at a time and glue them down. So. This is a fun one. I just think you can experiment with. I kind of placed them just so I don't forget kind of the general spacing. So I'm just putting a little Tombow glue on each one, making sure I get that lined up. that piece put a little Tombow glue with the Tombow glue it's just like kindergarten you don't want to blob it too much I just do a little streak and then you move it a little bit so that it sticks good because if you get too much on there, you, then you get, then you're starting to get glue all over the place, all over your fingers and all over the card. And you, you don't want that. So I'm not putting glue on the very tip of those check marks here. So I don't get it on my fingers. 
but I do, you know, again, there's no perfect glue. Just like there's no perfect stamp, photopolymer or the red rubber, there's awesome things about each one of our glues. Because I love how forgiving the Tombow glue is. You can stick it down with it and you can move it and adjust it a little bit before it commits. But the Tombow glue can also be one of the messier glues, especially when I do classes and stuff and people want to do uh, put glue all over the place. And then it gets all over everything. Right? I'm sure you guys never get your fingers messy when you're using Tombow, right? <laughs> so what are your some of your favorite foods that you love eating over Christmas time? One thing that I always, always ask my mom to make is her, there's, she does a three layer, it's like a fudge candy kind of thing. It's like a graham cracker layer and a, it's like pudding and cream cheese layer and, and then like melted chocolate chips on the top. It's like a three layer candy or a fudge or something. I don't know, it's delicious. So every Christmas I ask my mom to make that. And all the normal fixins are yummy too. I mean, who, who doesn't like ham and turkey and mashed potatoes and stuffing and sweet potatoes? And we had quite a spread of food. On Christmas Day, we hosted and we had 20 people at our house. So it was pretty packed. 10 kids and 10 adults. Even though, you know, my oldest kid is like a grown adult, but still my child. And thanks for all the congrats. Ooh, English toffee. That sounds yummy too. <laughs> you just ate some? Yes, we we don't have a whole lot of leftovers from our yummy food. Most of that, I think the three layer candy is gone. Gone, gone, gone. We'll see as I started gluing, I, my spacing got a little bit closer together. That's okay. That's okay. We'll still, we'll still make it work. Coffee, cookies, we had, I made some sugar cookies and let the kids decorate one night too. They had fun doing that. So many yummy foods during Christmas time, which is why I made myself exercise today. Because I hadn't done that in a while. <laughs> oh dear. Isn't that so fun, that sparkly paper? Love it. I really hope it is still in the current. I'm pretty sure it's in this, this year's current annual catalog, this sparkly rainbow paper. I'm pretty sure it is. What, sweetie? Um, all I was trying to do is I was trying to get the spark out and then the bag broke. Oh dear. Well, we'll have to put it in a different bag. I'll do that later because I'm doing my video right now. Okay, can you just put it on the kitchen table, please? Yeah. Thank you. My sister Kristen gave Sam a slime making kit. So... Yeah, we got, we made a mess today. The boys made some slime. It glows in the dark. It's really cool, but it's very messy. <laughs> um, okay, so now we've glued that down. If I can show this a little closer to you, you can see it's not just colorful, it is sparkly. So our rainbow glitter paper is awesome. So fun for this. Because now all I have to do is add kind of a fun saying. Now I could make it go this way, but I think I'm going to stick with um, up and down. And I think I like the you are one of a kind. And I'm going to stamp that on black paper, I think. And 
And if I can find my white craft pad, I think it's somewhere over here. Glad you can't see my whole table. <laughs> it's pretty messy. All right, so I'm going to ink up You Are One of a Kind in my white craft pad that after I did all my Christmas card classes, I think I need to put some more refill on this pad. Because usually you don't have to tap it this many times. But we're going to get it good and inked up. Okay, You Are One of a Kind. We're going to stamp that down on our black pad here, our black cardstock. I could keep it just in, the, in a rectangle, but I think I'm going to cut it out and have some fun with that. Again, with the white craft, you do want to make sure you're not touching right on... right over where you've stamped yet because this takes a little bit longer to dry than our regular cardstock. Okay, so I want to cut kind of close to right around those words. You are And this is where you could keep it really simple, glue those down, and um, when we get these on here, you could just leave it at that. Or if you have like a little flower punch or flower dye and you wanna add a flower as an accent, depending on how many, how much bling and how much extra the one of a kind person you're sending it to you can always step it up a bit if you want. That's always a choice. But to me, just adding this, see, you are one of a kind. To me, just this alone looks cool. You are one of a kind. Back and forth like that, or I could do this. Or you are one of a kind that way. I think I like it that. So that's where just, you know, after you get it cut out, then you can just decide where you want to put all those pieces. I'm popping these all up with dimensionals over. It should stick okay on the glitter paper. So you are, I'm using all the, one of a kind. And it's sparkly paper. Who's to say this isn't just for a girl? Might have a boy who really likes sparkles too. And you're just saying you are one of a kind. I'm going to put that a little bit lower. And then I'll put that right there. Some more dimensionals. Here's, these are mini. That's why I'm using two. Clear out all these black scraps here. Feel the backing off there? You are one of a kind. 
Isn't that fun? Yay, so cute. I really do like, um, you know, when you've got a white background, it is really nice to stamp. And I'm, I'm telling you, I I've showed you the lazy way many times. When you have, um, when you have a white craft pad, um, it's just a way less time. It's not quite as crisp as when you use em white embossing powder, but it still stands out there. You know, when you don't have that com to compare to, it still looks really cool. I like, I like that. Um, let's see. If I do, or maybe I do the white. White border on the Coastal Cabana here. So this is with the kind of the chevron pattern. Um, and I did, sh I cut out some in the chevron too, or in the uh, Coastal Cabana. So I have an, another extra border. Um, that just gives you extra pieces to work with then. And I'm trying to think, did I cut one in? I think I'll take this extra petal pink color because I think that'll look good with the Coastal Cabana. Um, so I'm going to cut that out in the chevron. I thought I had already, but I didn't. I just didn't. Um, so I'm gonna take this chevron, take it over to the big boss and cut that out. But I do need that cutting pad that I showed you. That's his key. It can be a little bit tricky to get it started. Okay, just cut out the petal pink there. And here's the pieces cut out that chevron. And then I have one more outline there to use. And I'm just gonna leave these pieces sitting here on my cutting pad for now, because as I fill it in, we're gonna try something different with this one. I'm gonna open it up. We'll use Tombow glue again to just glue the chevron parts, the thicker ones. So again, I'm not adding on the real skinny ones. I'm just, this should be enough to just do the thick chevron pieces. So either adhesive sheets or Tombow glue is gonna be your friend with these dies. I'll just add a little dot in the corners. I'm gonna hold on to the pieces that have the skinny chevron so I don't get my fingers all gluey. So here I didn't put glue on the skinny ones. Get this lined up and centered and glue the outline down. And 
can see just getting glue on the thicker ones should be good enough to keep everything down. And then I'm gonna take some of mine and I'm gonna add back in some of the pink ones. Okay, so I just cut these out so that now I can kind of pick and choose um, putting some of these back in there. And this is where too, you can, you can pick and choose whether you want them to go this way or this way. I seem to be picking it this way more, but it could go any way you want it to go. So now I'm putting a little Tombow glue and we're gonna put these back in. And since I cut out some in the Coastal Cabana too, put some of those in as well. Okay. Just making sure that the right ones fit too before I commit to gluing it down. So putting the Coastal Cabana in there. And you'll see, like, you wouldn't necessarily, if, if you're not going to do what I'm going to do, you wouldn't necessarily have to put the Coastal Cabana back in there but I'm gonna stamp over this. So I want it to be kind of one level. Um, I want it to be all on the same stamping plane since I am gonna stamp over it, if that makes sense. Because if I left some of them just blank, it, it really wouldn't stamp evenly. I'm gonna put more two more pink ones in here. I think those are the ones that fit in there. So this is, this is the fun thing about cutting it out in like a few different colors, because then you can kind of play with the layers. So kind of similar to what I showed you with our rainbow dies too. You're doing similar stuff with being able to refit in the colors that you cut out of the die. Sliding those in. And shoot, I don't think I put one back in here. This is where it gets tricky when it is the same color. Like, did I fit one in there or not? No, I didn't. So I did one, two, two, then I'll do one. What's nice is I'm pretty sure these chevron are fitting in whichever space you want them to. So that's nice that you don't have to, you really don't have to keep them lined up except for when we get smaller. So one, two, two, one, and we'll do two and two. Pick two more from here. And isn't that looking fun? So I'm just using, this is where I'm just using the white as the outline but I like the white outline, it looks pretty. And then I'm just filling it back in with the Coastal Cabana, so the same colors, and then the petal pink. And again, you'll see why I'm taking the time to put in the Coastal Cabana ones rather than just leaving it blank. If I was just gonna put a saying over it like I did with the other one, I would not be filling back in the Coastal Cabana pieces. But 
I am going to stamp over them. Oh, that piece needs to be... Oh, where's that piece? This is where they get a little trickier because... Ah, here we go. The pieces, when they get closer to the top, there, that one I need, that gets cut off that way at the top. So all the ones in the middle are fine. But the one at the top and then the ones that get smaller, you definitely need the size that fits into it. And we'll do, I think we'll just keep the top two, the pink. I think most of you guys own the Tombow glue, right? It is a good, good glue. Nice and dependable. And my friend Teresa gave me another, so I have, when I have classes, I can have another little Tombow holder. Thank you, Teresa. Oh, some of you Stampin' Up! friends are some of my best friends and speak my love language. I love you guys. So sweet. So thankful for all of you in my life. Seriously. And Liz, even though you were sick, you still dropped by some of that candy crack that my boys loved. They ate it up. So did I. <laughs> so, love you guys. Um... Okay, so I've got those all put into place. So now we're at, oh, did I stamp that or put those in? I don't think I did. Hang on, hang on. I think those pieces need to be glued in. I don't know if I'll even stamp down that far, but we'll see. little pieces. I didn't get those in. All right. See, that's where a product of the Tombow glue, I see I got little sticky fingers on a couple places. That's where I wish Stampin' Up! still sell the, sold these adhesive removers, but most of you guys have those too, right? It's nice to have that when you're using Tombow Glue. Okay. So now we're going to pull out a, a flower. I think I'm going to pull out this eclectic garden. So this is one of the other new stamp sets that I'll do a whole video on, but um, I'm trying to think of which one, which one I should use. I'll just use this. I don't even know what it is. It looks almost like a hydrangea, but it's different than that. So I'm going to stamp some flowers right over it. You know what? I don't know. Maybe I want to do a bigger one. No, I'll still do this. Just commit, Bethany. Just do it. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm getting a letter C block here. That'll fit on there just fine. And I think I'm going to take out a gray, a gray color, gray granite. So I'm gonna ink up this new flower from the Eclectic Garden. And I'm just gonna stamp this over all those pieces. And this is why I wanted to fill them all in. Because then it mostly will stamp kind of evenly. I'm gonna stamp it three times. There, there. I think I'll even stamp off, so let me get some 
Scrap paper. Stamp it off the bottom there. There. They're fun. Oh, see, I missed a piece, so it didn't stamp right. That's why I'm, I filled it all in so they were on the same level. Nobody will probably um, even really recognize that, but I'm still showing you. I missed that little tiny triangle. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now when you fill it in, you know, you can use whatever stamp set you have. So you could use animals, flowers, whatever, and stamp a few on there to add a little extra dimension to it. And I guess I'm going up and down again. I'll have to show you guys one going um, the other way. Because, let's see. You really are fabulous. So that could be um, just punched out of a circle. Let's see. Let me see what size this fits in. So I'm gonna stamp with that same gray. You really are fabulous. Oh, they did tell us what type of flower it is. I know they're trying to do a lot more like all over the world type of stuff. It is a cool flower. What am I doing? I'm getting... All right, let's see. See if my two inch circle punch will fit around there. Just right, perfect. Nice, you really are fabulous. Could go right here then. And if you wanted to dress it up a little, you could get some I think this is petal pink. Yeah, it's a little bit different pink. Mm, maybe I'll use this. Use a little twine. This is the cheater version of I'm not making a bow. I'm just wrapping it up and then I'll put the center on some glue dots. So I'm putting two glue dots down. For you crafters, you guys can relate, right? Seeing finding the backings of glue dots and dimensionals all over your house. And then that's just a little bit of twine. You're adding just a little bit of extra dimension. I don't know how I'm getting these extra little blobs on my card here. And then what I'll do is even put some dimensionals here I'm even using the border and we'll put that right right over the twine so that's really not moving anywhere and I'll put another one there so a glob of some dimensionals one holding that twine down so it doesn't go anywhere and oh the forest I don't know I think I might try stamping it in the same color but lightly so I'm going to stamp off on some scrap paper. So 
I'm gonna stamp off first. Let me see how light that is, okay. Stamp off. Stamp it on the real, you are fabulous. So it's a little bit more faint. Isn't that fun that you could add a little bit of bling on there if you wanted? So again, there's always fun ways to step up a project um, by adding some kind of bling, rhinestones, etc. So there's some chevron ones. Aren't those so cute? So fun. So I am excited um, about, thank you, Chris. These are fun to play with. I'm just having fun. See, this is why I do these live videos, guys, too, because if I didn't do that, I'd probably be making more slime with my kids, which is a good thing, too. But this just, it really makes me happy to get in here and play, play a little. Okay, so I used a Coastal Cabana and then a white card base for those. Let's look at trying to do one that goes the other way um, with this design because this, this one's really pretty too. So I'm not gonna take up too much of your time. I don't wanna spend uh, all of your afternoon looking at this, even though I could totally have fun. That's pretty. Let's see. I'll show pictures of all the ones I finished, but I'm just not sure which ones I wanna finish here. That is punched out. I think I'll do this, the rainbow glitter one again here. Okay, so with this one, you could either add um, little glue dots or, um, or the Tombow glue on just all the bigger dots here because the other pieces are pretty fine. So I'm adding a little glob dot of glue to each of the bigger sections. Again, you could use adhesive sheets. If that's a big, in my mind, if it's a big adhesive sheet. I usually use my adhesive sheets with like, I don't know, just smaller intricate things um, like the words, some of our word dies. Get a little bit of glue on some of the ends here. Some of those bigger pieces. Okay. And then I'm gonna lay that down and wanna center it. Now, if you're really worried about it moving a little bit more, you could use your fine tip glue pen on like the border. But I'm not too worried. And I'm gonna put something down on it that will help hold it together. Okay, so I just put glue on these bigger bobble pieces there. Doesn't that look cool? How fun. But now what I'm gonna do is we'll pop up. So I did cut up some of these in white. So I have that white background. So we're not gonna pop them all back, but we can put some of these back. So here's the some of my glimmer ones that were cut out. So we're just gonna do a random pattern. Okay. 
and these will pop up with dimensionals. Hey Rhonda, been thinking of you and your hubby. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to you all. Hope he can come home to you soon. Okay, so I'm popping these up with little mini dimensionals. That one fits right in there. Even if I don't get them right in the right spot, it'll be fine. I see kind of where they need to go. This has more green and then bluish. So that fit there or there. We'll put this one here. So this is why you don't want to throw away all the little pieces that you cut out because you really can have some fun with putting some of them back. And then I could use the rest to make just a pattern on a regular card or something. In fact, maybe I'll do that quick one after this. That one looks like that could fit there. Again, they don't have to match perfectly. So I did not keep these in any kind of organized spot where they belong. Maybe I'll put that one in there. My boys were so excited. They've been praying and praying and praying and praying and praying for snow over Christmas break. It's kind of sad that it just came yesterday, but, but my boys played outside for a long time. And then they came in, I made them hot chocolate, and they just were so happy and content that God let it snow at least once for them. It was pretty cute. They made a snowman that's already dead because the snowman's head fell off. <laughs> but, and Sam came in and he said, Mom, we named it Frosty. They were asking for a hat, but that didn't work. I gave them one of Joe's old Valpo Americans baseball hats. And they were like, yeah, the hat didn't work. <laughs> I'm going to put a white one, pop a white one in there too. Let's get one that's pink. Kind of want to get one filled in for each color pretty much. So here's a pink one. So there, that's kind of fun. Just popping a few back in there so you get the border of the color and then you can pop a few back in. And then, like I said, you can make um, you could make a whole other card or two with some of the rest of these and just put them in a pattern, kind of fun, and could do something fun with them. Um, you could even make them into like a little flower. Here, I'm just dreaming up what are some other things we could do with these extra pieces. You could make them into like a little flower and punch out a circle over that. Um, you could have some fun with the extra pieces. But for this one, let's see. Let's just stamp. Um, should we use green? This granny, I feel green kind of matches that. Or maybe I'll take white paper but stamp in Granny Apple Green. Let's see, happy for you or happy birthday? I don't know. It's probably a fun happy birthday one. Let's make a happy birthday. You know, when in doubt, make it a happy birthday card, right? That's probably the majority of what people send out are happy birthday, but I do Sadly, I do send out quite a bit of um, 
sympathy cards these days too. Happy birthday. Let's see what kind of dies cut out that shape. Yeah. Rather than looking for a die, I'm going to do the fast and lazy route and just cut it. Boop, 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 boop. Cut that at an angle. Boop. And leave about the same amount of space on top of the happy birthday. And you can tuck that in there. Yeah, I think I like it there. Happy birthday. We'll put one. Let me cut this off. Run down to the end of this sheet here. Aren't these pieces fun? So Rhonda, you came late. This, this is the Slimline, Slim Sang stamp set, but the Slim Line card dies. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it right there. Happy birthday. And this has enough bling on it, on it already because the paper is blingy. Happy birthday. You really don't have to do a whole lot more to it, right? And then slap it in one of your Stampin' Up! the Slimline um, envelopes and you're set. You'd have to have a different maybe saying to go on the inside, but aren't those fun? So much fun. So we'll see what I do with this one. I'll do something fun with this one too. Um, yeah, you guys like these dies? Aren't they fun? A fun new toy to play with. What I love the most about this is there are toys I get to play with, but then the, they're hugs that I get to send to people too, eventually. Now these hugs probably won't get sent, sent for quite a while because I send out a lot of my retired cards too. But So those are our few examples from today's Slim Sayings stamp set. Hope that you liked watching uh, what you can do with these dies. Um, so it's fun. This, this was not even using the background. I just, uh, taped down the chevron that I'd cut out of the, uh, rainbow paper. And again, you don't have to get the stamp set, but it's always better when you get it because they work so nicely together. Here I stamped right over. So I filled back in those pieces and you could use any of your stamp sets, flowers, whatever, and stamp over it to make some kind of background and then use your saying to stamp in there. So this is Coastal Cabana white and petal pink. Are those colors there? And then I use gray granite to stamp. And then this one going the other way vertically, our sparkly happy birthday. So for all occasions, there's also that happy for you. And uh, this would make a fun, you know, congrats to the graduate card, make it fun and different size for your graduates. I can't believe it's almost 2022 because that's the year in May my son will graduate. And oh my goodness, he's already enlisted in the army and we already know his ship out date. He leaves July 5th and he will start his basic training July 11th. And so that's been a little bit of an emotional journey for me, this mama, but I'm so proud of him. Uh, my big 18 year old boy. So um, I might be sending some of you, I might not throw it out totally public, but I might be throwing out to some of you, my favorite Stampin' Friends, um, my son's address, so he'll get some fun, fun army hugs in the mail. Because um, I don't think he wants too many. He might get, you know, you, you just never know what army guys do. They might be jealous and they might hurt him. I don't know. <laughs> um, hopefully not. <laughs> but... He is going to go, yeah, Rhonda, he's going down to Fort Benning. So he will be in Georgia. Um, so good good excuse to go down to Georgia in the fall when he finishes his basic training. Because um, it's 10 weeks. He starts in July. So it would be through July, August, maybe sometime in September, we would go down and see him graduate from his basic training. So 
yeah, he'll be in Fort Benning and he wants to do airborne school. And then um, I think he wants to try to do the ranger training too. Like my brother, John was an army ranger. So I believe all the ranger training could be down in Fort Benning too in Georgia. So yeah, that's where he's headed. I'm so sad. Time is flying by too fast. So, but I'm going to, I'm trying to treasure and soak up all the time we have with him. Um, love my boys so much. So, um, so anyhow, that was a side note. Get excited guys, because next week when I come in, all of this new stuff will be available. January 4th is when all of it goes live. Um, so on the 5th next week, um, I will show you, we'll do a little walkthrough because I'll be able to finally show you the catalog. It'll be awesome. Um, and there's way more fun than this, so get excited. Yay! So thank you guys. Thanks for your prayers. Um, I do appreciate it. Uh, we can all use prayer. But Oh, cool. You had a cousin who was an army ranger? Cool. Yes. So proud of, so, so proud of anyone who chooses to serve our country in that way. Love them. And um, it makes me righteously angry when I hear of people who disrespect our, our police officers, our firefighters, and our, our military. Um, those are people we should shake hands, thank, and pay for their meals and love on because they do so much for our communities and they love and serve us well um, to the point of sacrificing stuff for their family. Um, and sometimes sacrificing their lives, right? So we should love on anyone that we know who has served our country and who is serving us in any of those, um, even our nurses. Our nurses, our firefighters, our policemen, um, and, and, and any military service. Uh, those are people I feel so strongly we need to make sure they know that they're appreciated and loved and um, that they are all heroes to us. So that's something we can do too. So thanks guys so much for joining me. I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your, your break or however that looks. Happy new year to you guys. Um, hopefully, hopefully, Lord willing, 2022 will be a little bit better. And <laughs> I don't know, guys, let's just keep loving each other and spread the love and stay positive, right? So you guys are fabulous. And you guys are all one of a kind. And I love you all. So thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next week. Bye.